Hello, I'm Yontine Powell and this is Chapel Cottage Studio. We've been, over the last few clips, building up this picture of the little Frisian cow. And last time we did putting colour into black. Now on this clip I'd like to show you how to do the opposite, how to put colour into white. So we're going to work on the white blaze and the white shapes down the flanks of the cow. My palette is the same, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, turquoise, permanent rose, cadmium yellow. The same five colours throughout the picture with the addition of white. Plenty of colours. If you can keep your colours to five, your picture will generally be nice and cohesive and will keep together. So, in order to make the whites up here, you've seen the photo of the finished piece. The cow has a white blaze, but it can't be just white or it's going to be really flat. So we have to make colours for the shadows. And if we use the same palette, make up this again a little bit. I'm going to start with my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm going to put the very darkest bits, put my glasses on. I've got my little teeny tiny photo up here and there's definitely a dark area across here where the hair changes direction on the pole of the cow and there are some dark bits coming down here. At the moment this is going to look very clumsy all of that will change later on. The cow has what they call a wall here, where all the hair comes out in a circle. So I'm going to just begin to describe that with my dark. And there's a couple of shadows going down there. Wash my brush in between every colour. Now I'm going to go into my turquoise, bit of white, bit of turquoise, and I'm going to add some of this maybe a little further out, leave some darks and add some of these turquoise colours. All the same colours that we used for the light on the dark. You may notice that when we did light on black, we started with the black and put the lights on top. But when we do a shadow in white, we start with the dark colours and the light goes on afterwards. Just breaking them up a little bit up here. And the same down here. Start to break up the, the straight line on the sides a little bit. There's some of my turquoise going in. And there's definitely a bit of a shadow going on over there. There's a shadow going on down here. Put a bit of that in. Oh, and there's a bit of a shadow going on down here. I might just put a little bit of that ultramarine and brown in there. Burnt Sienna. Right. Next colour. I love using loads of colour to describe things. Now is my nice bright pink. Let's add a bit of that. Why wouldn't you? Because it's beautiful. There we are. But I am looking at the direction of the hair. At the top it comes down here. Down here it goes up to meet it, which is causing that shadow in the middle. Whoops, got a bit of white, a bit of water in that that I didn't want. I think I need a little bit more dark along here. You've always got to be thinking one step ahead, because if you try and make this pretty and white in the beginning, you're going to end up with something a little bit dull. So you have to think ahead, you have to think underneath this white blaze there's a lot of shadow and a lot of dark colour and put it in to begin. I'm also going to add just a tiniest bit of that cadmium yellow which is actually very difficult to imagine in the picture so you just have to know it's there and add a bit, not too much. Right. Oh, I forgot to put the pink down here. Let's do that as well. Get a bit of pink in there and in there. Always wash your brush well between these colours because you will make mud otherwise. Now I'm going to go into my white. The white is the last thing to put on. And what's going to happen is that these colours are a little bit wet. 
and they're going to pull the white into themselves and make lots of nice different colours. So I'm coming down from the top, trying to, to think here in a way and put it in the right places. But do look at the picture. Don't do what you think is there. Because if you do that, you're quite likely to give him a bob or something. So do look at the picture. I can see a lot of light by here. So I'm going to put it on lots of white by there. And I can see a lot of light going on over here. So I'm going to put extra white on by there. And you can start to see already that we're getting some shadows and some lights and you're starting to believe that it's white with a shadow and not just multicolored. I think I'll put a little bit up there. Now I'm going to come down here, do the same thing. I'm going to start on the outside where it's really white and I'm going to make sure that I'm just breaking up that dark a bit. Make sure that your strokes are small. This is short hair, it's not great long stuff. So make your strokes short, otherwise you'll create the wrong look. It's very lit coming down the side of here. So I'll use nice pure white by there. Then as it goes to this side, I'm starting to see more shadow. It's gone a little bit dry there, but that's okay. I can just put some more colour in on top. Well, that's okay. The colour has come through it. And coming up to the middle here. Again, I'm describing the way the hair goes. You won't see it all and you don't have to be perfect at all. It's just an idea of the way that the hair is going. Let some of those colors join in to create the shadow. The quicker you can do it, the better, because those colors will join in nicely then. All start to blend a little bit. Don't take too long. It's also, it's really nice to see the paint marks. I don't want it all blended carefully in. I want to see the paint. Now I'm going to give myself a chance to go back over it. It's a very wet bit there, which is bugging me. That's quite nice. Nice, nice short strokes to describe the short hair. And we can see where the hair changes direction. I think that needs to join in a bit and I may just put a little bit more dark in. You can always alter, always scope to change. Whoops, I need to make up a little bit more though because it had gone a little bit dry. There we are, you can always add a bit more. Try not to fuss too much. There we are, and I want a little piece where the black goes in. That's nice. Now I'll do the opposite again and go back over it and soften those edges. That's it. Got nice two nice little thin bits there then coming in. And I'll go over these again, but make sure I leave some little chinks of dark. And we've got what looks really nice and furry or hairy but we've got beautiful colours in with it. I may just make sure that the light is on this side, that there's just a little bit more heavy white on this side and a little bit up there. You must look at your photograph that you're taking your inspiration from and really see where the light is. Put a bit on there. And it's little strokes, thick paint, And a little bit more right in the centre here, I think. And I want to just fill those in a little bit. There we are. That's nice. Now, got to do the same thing down here. We're going to fill in the whites that are going down the flank of the cow. Make it join the body. Bit of an obvious thing to say, but you know, you never know. And I'm going to take it again over the paints. They dried a little bit there, so I'm going to add a little bit of water, make it a bit more see-through. Oh, by the way, we could also get back to the orange, just a tiny bit here and there. 
create some skinny little gaps in the hairs. That's nice. We've got those blues and pinks creating the shadow. Bit of extra white to make the top bit shine. Same thing over here. Bit of light on the top bit. And we've done everything so far with this big brush. There's just a little bit there I don't want and you can scrape it off. A little bit of water on my brush to make it mix in down here. So we get a shadow colour. And it's surprising how dark your colour can be and it'll still create a shadow. Now, I'm not sure I like that shape. So, I think now is the time to change it. I'm going to bring it down there and end it. That's nicer because it looked too much the same as that one. So I'm just going to change that shape. Sorry cow, I didn't like your pattern. That's nicer. So, we've put the whites on. We've got some beautiful interesting colours in them, but you still see white. We've used the same colours as we've used throughout the painting so that everything is cohesive, everything goes together, makes a beautiful painting with a contrast in the background, but you still see black and white cow despite all the colours. That's the excitement of painting. So the next little clip, we're going to put the finishing touches. Thank you very much for watching.